The subdivide program includes a routine that can automatically subdivide a parcel into smaller lots. This routine can be used in two ways. You can use it to divide the parcel into equal pieces, or you can tell it to make the lots a specific area, and it will create as many smaller parcels as will fit. The routine is called subdivide attract by parts. First of all, this command only works with tracked objects. So before you can use it, you must draw up the main parcel using the tracked command. And if you're not sure how to do that, there are several videos that will show you how. Also, the track must be closed, meaning that it must go around the parcel of land and end up back at the starting point. Your parcel can be any size, and it can be made up of as many lines and arcs as you wish. However, it will not work well if the parcel has deep, concave sides or internal geometry, such as a road or cul-de-sac. In those cases, it might be better to draw the parcel as two separate pieces and then run the routine after. Here are some examples of parcels that will calculate just fine. And here are some examples of shapes that you should avoid. For instance, the routine may try to divide the track right across these concave portions, which of course would be incorrect. One final note is that the original parcel is not saved. It is instead replaced with the smaller parcels that are created. So if you want to keep it, use the copy command to either copy it in place or create a copy and move it off to the side. So let's say I want to divide this parcel right here into two equal parts. I'll start the command by clicking the Tools menu, then Subdivide Attract, and Subdivide Track by Parts. The first thing it asks me to do is to select the track that I want to subdivide. So I'll click it, and a wizard appears. This wizard is going to walk us through the rest of the procedure step by step. The first screen is informational, and it's mainly there for folks that haven't bothered to watch this video. So I'll just click Next. And here it wants to know which method we want to use to divide up the parcel. For this exercise, I said I wanted to divide the parcel into two equal parts, and that's what the first option does. So I'll click Next, and now it wants to know how many parts I want to divide it into. And I'll leave that at two, but I could instead divide it into three parts, five parts, or even 20 parts if I wanted to. Next, it wants to know which side of the parcel that you want to start measuring from. And this will be the direction that the parcels are created. So if you chose to create 10 equal parcels, then this first setting would start creating them from the left side and continue building them towards the right. And here's a helpful tip. If you use the routine on a complicated parcel and it says that it can't find a solution, try running it again, but choose the opposite direction. Sometimes that can make the parcel easier to calculate and get you a solution. And we'll just leave this set to the default. Here you need to tell the program what direction you want the dividing line to be. In this case, the default would be to divide the parcel using a vertical line. But let's make it interesting, and instead, we'll enter a bearing. We'll make it north, 12 degrees, 22 minutes, 34 seconds east. Now there are two important points to note here. The first is that even if you give it a bearing, such as in our case, a northeast bearing, the program may end up using the reciprocal of that bearing, meaning that the dividing line might end up being a southwest bearing instead. And that's because the lots are always created in a clockwise direction, and the cutting edge is going to be the last line. And so in this case, the cutting edge, in fact, will end up going southwest, even though we entered a northeast bearing. The line is the same line, though. It just points the opposite direction, which is OK. The second thing to note here is that you should avoid entering an extreme direction for the cutting edge. For best results, try to use a cutting edge that's reasonably square with the rest of the tract. If the angle is too extreme, the program might not be able to calculate a solution for you. So, moving on, 
When the lot is subdivided, the first lot that is created will have the same name as the original parcel. Here we can enter a name for the second parcel, and in this case we'll call it Parcel B. And if we've chosen to create even more parcels, each successive parcel name would auto-increment to Parcel C, Parcel D, E, and so on. And last is a summary of what we're going to do with the subdivision. You can read this to double check before you commit to it, but remember that you can also use the undo command if it doesn't turn out the way you want it. So I'll click finish, and there are our two lots. Suppose I wanted to divide it into 10 parts. I'll undo this by pressing Control Z and start the command again. This time, I'll enter 10 parts. And to make it more interesting, I'll have it create the lots from the top down. And I'll have the name start with parcel B. And there they are. So let me undo that. And let's move on to another example. In this exercise, we'll divide the parcel into one acre lots. So again, I'll start the command. And I'll select the parcel. And this time, I'll select the option to divide it into a fixed area. On the next screen, it needs to know how large I want each lot. Now, normally, you'll enter this area in acres but you can also enter it as square feet by entering the foot symbol. So if I wanted to enter the value in square feet, I would enter 43,560 with the foot symbol, which of course is the same number of square feet in an acre. Now, if you were using meters, if you had your unit set to meters, you would enter this in square meters. Now down here, we can tell the program to just create a single lot at our desired area or to go ahead and create as many lots as will fit. And in either case, any remaining area will be thrown into the last lot that's created. We've already discussed the rest of the prompts, so I'll just take the defaults, and we'll use a vertical dividing line, and we'll start with parcel B. And next up is our summary, and we click Finish. And there are our lots. And as you can see, each one is a one acre lot exactly with the remaining area thrown into the last lot, which is 0 0.35 acres. Before concluding this video, I want to take a moment and show you what can happen if you try this routine on a more complicated parcel, like this one with a cul-de-sac. I'll start the command, select the parcel, and I'm going to tell it to do half acre lots. Now let's see what happens. It starts out OK, but it gets over here, and it just can't do it. In a case like this, it might be better for you to have manually drawn in the lot lines. And we have a routine that does just that. It's called divide a track by a line, and it's covered in its own video.